show of hands, who is surprised that I am back once again to talk about Supergirl, Supercorp? Who is surprised? Like, I genuinely want to know who is surprised that I'm here again for a third time talking about this damn show. Um, and the funny thing is, I wasn't actually going to do a, a rant video. I was going to, like, kind of let this one slide. But, like, people were tweeting me and, like, you know, you know, saying I should do one, whatever. And I wasn't going to. I'm like, oh, nah. But then, you know what pushed me over the edge? This is going to sound so petty, but it's always the small thing, the littlest things that make me want to, like, you know, do this video. And I com I tweeted something about queer baiting, about Supergirl, uh, Supercorp, sorry. And some fan account tweeted me saying, they're not going to be canon, sweetie. And I'm like, oh my god, the disrespect. <laughs> No, 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 no. You do not get to call me sweetie and get away with it. So this video is out of spite. No, I'm joking. I'm going to be a petty bitch and I'm going to make this video because why the hell not? <laughs> because apparently some people are not understanding the issue. So strap yourselves in. Get ready for another rant video about the same bloody topic that we've already discussed. <laughs> Hello, bitches. Hi, guys. Welcome to a brand new video. Today, if you haven't already gotten the hint, this video is all about... It's another rant video, obviously. It's all about Supergirl, Supercorp, Queer Baiting, Part 3. Yes, I have actually done two other rant videos about this, so if you want to check those out, you can click in the description box below, and I will link those there for you. But, obviously, my opinions haven't changed since those videos, so obviously. I just, like... I feel like it's therapeutic for me to voice my opinion over a YouTube video rather than online because I feel like words can get misconstrued. Um, so I feel like, for me, this is a good outlet for me. So, um, get ready, guys. This is going to be interesting. Um, before I get into the video, obviously, once again, this uh, is not directed to the cast. We're leaving them out of it, okay? We love the cast. We're not getting in... We're not dragging anybody, okay? We're directing this at the crew and the network and the people, the powers that be, the, you know, the higher people. We're talking to those people today, okay? So, um, before we even, like, actually get into the video, I just... This is so funny to me. So, we're going to talk about queer baiting for the first part, obviously. Because this is, like, the biggest issue, I think. Um, or one of the biggest issues, I, just, I should say. But the funniest thing... I want to just give a definition of queer baiting to you people, to the people who might be confused on, you know, why we think it's queer baiting or, you know, they, some people are confused, you know, and I think we should give them a definition, I should give them a definition about what it is, just, to, you know, simplify for those people, you know, so, the queer, this is on the, I found this on the Wikipedia page, okay, queer baiting is a marketing technique for fiction and entertainment in which creators hint at, but then do not actually depict same-sex romance or other LGBTQ representation. Simple? I think that's pretty simple, right? And the funniest thing, the funniest thing on this article, in this, on this uh, Wikipedia page, is they give examples of queer baiting in television. And if I scroll down, I'll put the screen here for you, okay? If I scroll down on this Wikipedia page, you go to examples, television examples, okay, 911, Buck and Eddie. Okay, that's true. You have like a few other ones, like Once Upon a Time, Regina and Emma Swan. Don't even go there. You have uh, Rizzoli and Isles, please. We have Supernatural, Cassiel and Dean. And then you got Supergirl, Cara Danvers, and Lena Luthor. It's literally, and, and, I, and I know Wikipedia is not like a reliable source, you know, but like it's pretty accurate when you read it like this, and it's true. But like they literally have Supercorp as an example of queer baiting in television. I mean, look, take that as a grain with a grain of salt. I don't care. But this just, I, for, to me, it's just hilarious that Supercorp is one of the queer baiting examples in television. Like, it's just funny to me. Like, I don't know. It's just hilarious. And I think the most frustrating thing is the writers and the producers, like, whatever. Like, there's this writer who was going, like, a, a tangent online because, like, you know, he was denying that Supercorp was, you know, romantically involved. Like, blah, blah, blah. He's like, we're not queer baiting. And this was the tweet, actually. I screenshotted it because I wanted to read it out on the camera. But... <laughs> He's this guy. This apparently this guy's written like what three or four episodes of Supergirl. Like cool, whatever, no worries. But he's tweeted saying 
That's not my place or my job and not what I said. But on the show, Lena and Kara are not lovers. If you feel like the show is promising that and not delivering on it, that is not our intention. Okay, if that's not your intention, then why the hell are you making the scenes romantically with you know, sub, uh, underlined with romantic undertones? Wait, did that make sense? You know what I mean. Why are you writing scenes and directing scenes with romantic undertones implying they could be canon, like your bait, it's, if that's called bait? And if you don't think it's bait, then you either need to reevaluate what you define as baiting. And I feel like the issue is that this guy is he's a man first of all but no and what baffles me is that if you write if you do not see those romantic undertones when you write or you know when you direct news if you don't see that on screen you're either dumb or you see it and you choose to willingly ignore it and i'm just like why like literally why and i feel like these men who think they know everything <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm targeting men, but, like, I'm not. They think they know everything. I'm just like, first of all, let me just say one thing. When the majority of the LGBTQ community are coming to you and telling you you're queer baiting, there shouldn't be a discussion about it. You should you should be like, okay, I should reevaluate and go over what we've, you know, what I've written and, like, what we've shot. You should go back and watch those scenes. Acknowledge that, okay, maybe there are romantic undertones, and you can either... Stop writing scenes like they're romantic and stop putting in romantic music and say to the fans, okay, we're not doing it, please stop. And we'll be like, okay, no worries, just don't, you know, and then stop writing them romantically. No worries. Or you make them canon. That are your only two options. But you guys are taking the third option and choosing to willingly ignore the you know, the romantic undertones, and I'll tell you why, and it is because the majority, and this is a, well, I don't know if it's a fact, but, like, I think it's a fact, <laughs> majority of the Supergirl fandom ship Supercorp, like, maybe 90% ship Supercorp, let's be completely honest right now, and the reason why you're continuing to bait the fandom, the Supercorp fandom, with Supercorp, and, you know, romantic undertones and stuff, is because you're trying to, we are the only ones carrying your show, we are the ones watching your show every week, because we see the romantic, you know, we see the chemistry between Kara and Lynn, and we're like, oh my god, this is such an epic love story, and you use that and to manipulate the fans into continuing to watch your show, because the show is dying off. Let's be honest, if you look at the ratings, they're not great. So you're using us to get to, you know, otherwise without us, without the viewers and the fans, you have no show. And that's a fact. And you keep us there by baiting Supercorp, and that is not cool at all. And the writers know this. The writers know. The writers are using Supercorp as a marketing technique to get people to watch their show because they know the majority of their fans are Supercorp fans and without us, the show would tank. And they know that. And they're taking advantage of that. And why? You're, you're, and you people who are, you know, don't, you know, are probably like, why do you still watch the show then? Just stop watching the show. I would love to. But I love the cast so much. And this is, well, this is just me talking. I love the cast so much. And I'm so far up Katie McGrath's ass. It's just like, I would, I would die for that woman, right? Anything she did, I have to support. I love, um, Arzi. I love Nicole. I love Melissa. I love Kyla. All the women of the show, I, I stand so hard. And like, you know, I watch it because I want to support them. I want to support their projects. But it's just infuriating when the ride is just, do y'all, do you all, I, y'all created, these writers created an epic love story without even realizing it. Like, bitch, what the fuck? You all literally created an epic love story. And I'm just like, like, how do you ignore, I, I keep saying this, how do you keep ignoring it? Like, whether you intended to or not, it's like, yeah, you write one thing, but then, you know, you have to let the story Go in whichever way it's intended to, you know, intended to be. And, like, when you see the chemistry between Melissa and Katie, you're like, well, for us, I'm just like, holy shit, how are you not picking up on this? Like, it's a gold mine. It'd be revolutionary. It'd be groundbreaking. So I'm just like, guys, what... Either, I know it's because, as I said in my last video, they're probably homophobic assholes at the top on, you know, making these network decisions. Like, I'm just saying, like, it's just so annoying. And I want to read out... 
this thread on Twitter to you guys. Um, because I saw it earlier today and I'm like, oh my god, this is actually hilarious. I actually love this. I have to address this in my video. So this account, fan account, uh, it's her name is Adriana Tarazi. Love that. <laughs> um, made a thread and it says, if Lena was a man, a thread. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Here's the tea. Because th we a uh, plate. I let me just read it out to you. If Lena was a man, the gala date would have been perceived as an actual date and they would have danced together. Fact. If Lena was a man, after she left Kara's apartment when she visited the first time, Alex would have gushed and asked her about their relationship. Fact. If Lena was a man, there would have been a love triangle between Supercorp and Caramel. Caramel. Fact. And I actually think that would probably would have happened. That probably would have happened. If Lena was a man, there probably most likely would have been a love triangle because it's a CW and they love their love triangles. You cannot deny that. And I was just like, damn, like, I never really thought about that part. Like, if Lena was a man, there would definitely be would have been a love triangle. 100%. Fact. If Lena was a man, the flowers line in, I think it was 212 on the couch, would have been taken as romantic. And as I said in the in the next episode, Mixel Peplik, whatever hell his name is, I can't pronounce it. I apologize. He delivered flowers and that was considered romantic. If Lena was a man, she would have been treated as the good Luther always and never treated like she would go dark at any minute. That is also a fact because apparently the men only care about the men. Lex Luther. We'll get to that in a second. If Lena was a man, she would have worked with Kara during season 5, no matter how angry she was, because men are more redeemable in their eyes. Big fact! Off the tea! But is the tea on the floor? I think so. If Lena was a man, I believe all the mistreatment of her character would go away. That's also a fact, because people tend to, or men, tend to judge female characters harsher than men. That's a fact. If Lena was a man, the You're My Hero line would have been taken as romantic. Very fact. Yeah, very fact. Yes, fact. <laughs> I'll link that thread uh, in my description box as well if you want to check it out by Adriana Tarazi. Thank you for making that. I really appreciate that uh, bit of clarity because I was like, holy shit. And it's true. Like, it's it's not, you know, they're not wrong. If Lena was a man, and you can't deny this, if Lena was a man, they, Kara and Lena would have been together from like maybe season three onwards. Or maybe, they would have had been married by now, let's be honest. In the 100th episode, they would have been married. And it's just like, and it's the only reason why they're not canon is because it's two women and they already have, you know, a uh, LGBT relationship on the show. Now we're segueing into Callie and Alex. The mistreatment of Danson, the mistreatment of Callie as a character. I just, like, the writers kind of want to shut us up and be like, oh, you already have a, you know, a lesbian rela uh, uh, you know, romance. Like, shut up now. Like, okay, you say that, but then you don't actually show Danson as a romantic couple. Like, you give maybe, I think someone told, uh, tweeted out that, I think they totaled up. It was literally a total of like nine minutes of dance and screen time in the entirety of season five. Nine minutes! Like, what the fuck? I could be wrong. Please don't quote me. It's probably around nine, ten minute mark. Let's be honest. I thought less. Oh my, not to be generous. Like, holy shit, the writers are really like, ooh! Oh, careful writers, giving us too much. <laughs> that was sarcasm. Um, but it's just like if you want to, if you want to shut us up, then give us a lesbian relationship and actually show it on screen. Don't just like honestly. I have to say, if I wasn't, if I didn't know that Kelly and Alex were together, like romantically, I wouldn't know. Like I wouldn't think twice. I'll be like, oh, okay, they're just friends. Like I literally wouldn't think they're together because you don't see them being romantic and their relationship hasn't really evolved. We don't see their relationship going to the next level and you don't see anything. It happens off screen apparently. I want to see those moments. And that's why I think um Danvers isn't oh uh, sorry, Dan Sin isn't uh as popular as like Sanvis because Sanvis you actually got to see all these romantic scenes that were like amazing chemistry but with dancing you don't see enough of it to want to care about it a lot you know what I mean like yeah I mean I still care about it obviously because it's like you know I love the rep but it's not very good rep in my eyes like nine minutes of screen time in the entirety of, of 19 episodes what the fuck is that really like it just baffles me man I'm just like how and Callie 
Also, so, while we're talking about this, there were deleted scenes that came out in the Supergirl Season 5 DVD. Deleted scenes. There was a cute dancing, dancing scene at the gala at the beginning of Season 1, uh, Season 5, their first episode, Event Horizon. There was a really cute moment that were dancing, and, uh, Callie gave Alex uh, the Obsidian Tech, um, I think it was the lenses. And I'm like, that was, like, a cute moment. Why are you cutting that? There was also some cute Nia moments. Um, with Kara, and I'm like, I was missing, like, some Kara and Nia moments, because, you know, we love them, and apparently there was, like, a Callie and Nia scene that got cut as well, there was, like, a Callie and James scene that got cut, and I'm just like, hold on, something isn't adding up, why are you cutting Callie's scenes, like, we barely really got to see Callie this season, she might have had maybe one episode where she had, like, majority screen time. But the rest, she was like a background character, like a side character. She had like one or two lines. Like, it didn't... Oh, and I'm just like, how is that fair? You have a main character, Arzi, who... She, I was going to say, one of the main characters on the show. So, obviously, you should be giving her a storyline. Uh, you know, a decent amount of screen time. Yet, you're giving a guest star, Lex Luthor, all this screen time after Crisis. Like, he's a bloody god. Like, oh, look at Lex, look at Lex. And yes, don't get me wrong, John Cryer plays a fantastic Lex. As I said, we're not criticizing the actors. The actors are great. He does a fantastic job as Lex, 100%. The issue is that Lex is taking up all this screen time as a guest star or like a recurring character when you have main characters who aren't getting the same, you know, who are getting less of what Lex is getting. Kelly and Nia. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? And why? Because Lex is a man. I would not be... Un I, I can't put it any clearer. Lex is a man and... And same with William. They might not give, they might not have given William all the screen time, but they definitely hinted at shit that it's like romantic because like he's a man. Oh my God. Like we need to shove him with Kara. Like give her a you know, romantic relationship. We have to put her with a man. Like no. Fucking Kara doesn't need a man, bitch. She doesn't need a man. I don't give a fuck. She could be a single. Like, I'm down. Let her be alone then. Like, I'm down for that. Like, either give me Super Corp or keep Kara single. I'm happy either way. <laughs> but, like, it's just, like, you need to treat your characters with more respect. And Arzi is a talented actress and so is Nicole. They're both very talented women and talented actresses. They deserve more screen time. And the writer's room needs to have some more people of colour in there. Um, because if you don't have uh, people of colour in your writer's rooms, the characters of colour do not get the equal storyline. you know what I mean? So we should, I mean, and that's a big problem in, like, the industry, like we know. And it's sad and disgusting. And we need to fix that shit ASAP because our characters aren't getting treated equally and we love them. We want them to, we want to see them shine. So we need, I don't know, man. Like, am I just talking bullshit? Am I just talking to a camera? I don't know, man. Like, I just, it's just, it baffles me that. I don't know, man. And then we have, as I said, with William. He has all, he has literally two scenes with Kara and suddenly it's fucking romantic. Like, he brings her food and Alex is like kind of hinting, hitting Kara like, oh, did you see that? And I'm like, bitch, Kara went around the world to get Lena her favourite foods from Paris and, every, and London and everywhere. And that is not considered romantic. I'm like, actually, choke. And in the 100th episode, as I said, it was all about Kara and Lena. And I'm just like... Every th William literally does the bare minimum, and it's romantic. Lena does all this shit for her, buys cat coat, like, does all this shit for her, and it's not romantic. Like, William does the bare minimum. He literally breathes, and they're like, oh my god, chemistry! No. Like, make it make sense. I don't know. Look, if you made it this far into the video, I applaud you. <laughs> um... Also, there was, like, this one, uh, oh, speaking of the deleted scenes, there was a Super Corp deleted scene. Um, and it was, honestly, the best thing in the entire world. <laughs> and, um, Kara, um, I think Lena says, I'm, I don't want to be a... They actually explained a bit of Leviathan. Um, it was in episode 7 when Kara bridal carried Lena back to her apartment. They went back and, like, it was just such a nice scene. And they talked a bit about Leviathan, which is, like, crucial to the story. I'm like, hello. Like, we needed to know this information about Leviathan. And Alina was like, you know, I'm not a damsel in distress. Like, you don't have to protect me. And then she's like, I want to be by your side. And it was, like, so romantic. Well, I thought it was. <laughs> but, like, the look that Lena and Kara gave to each other at the end, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, yes. And I'm just like, why the fuck are you cutting this shit? And, like, it's funny because there was a scene also where uh, Kara was getting ready for her date. Um, and she says to Alex, what color? Blue or purple? 
And Alex is like, blue, always go with the blue. But on her date with William, Kara is wearing purple. But with Lena, she wears blue, which brings us, segues us to the colour choices of the wardrobe for Supercorp. Kara wears blue, Lena wears red, and they dress similar to, like, Clovis. Like, obviously, the, the Superman, Supergirl suit. And then you have, like, the... I, I can't. Like, Le uh, Lois wears red in some of the photos that I've seen. Like, I've told you, I've compared this before. It's not a, it's not a surprise. But there's one photo I wanted to show you where... Look what Lena's wearing in this photo, and you compare it to all the other, like, Lois, like, versions of Lois in film and TV, it's the same! Like, you're given this, you're given the vibe. Like, how can you not, how is it not intentional? Like, I don't understand. How are you actually parallel, paralleling, does that make sense? How are you making parallels between Clovis and Supercorp without realising it? How the fuck don't you know? I'm sorry, I'm getting so fine up. I apologise for, like... <laughs> but it's, I'm so passionate, and it makes me so angry to see all... To see this shit happen. And I'm just like... So how do you parallel them without knowing it? How does that happen? You would have to know. There is no way... And, as, and it comes back to queer baiting and the marketing technique, because they do it on purpose to keep the Supercorps coming back for more. Because I know if they market Supercorp, there's more interactions, and we you know we'll view the episode to see that Kara and Lena interact for like two seconds. Like, that's what it's about. And relating back to the very first part of this uh, video, when I said, when that person tweeted me saying, they're not going to be canon, sweetie, relax. Whatever they said. And I'm like, and like, it comes back to, that's not the issue. The issue is the queer baiting. I don't care if they're canon or not. Do we? Do you understand? Let's get this through the people's heads. I, or the Supercorp fandom, do not care. I, I, don't, I don't want to really speak on behalf of the fandom, the Supercorp fandom. But for me, my issue, I don't care whether Kara and Lena are together. I don't care. I care about the fact that the writers continue to queer bait and make it, you know, make it seem like they could be. Because that's not fair to us. You can't do that. Like, as I said, I'd rather Kara be single if the, if they have to not go that way. Let her be single and that's fine. But don't shove another male love interest down our throats just because you're running out of time. Like, no. So, the issue isn't that they're not together. The issue is the writing and the queer baiting. Let me... I don't know how many times I can say it. Anyways, I feel like I've spoken, like, a lot. Um, was there anything else I wanted to address? <laughs> So, if you guys have made it this far into the video, um, thank you. I really, really appreciate you. Um, I hope that I made sense, because I always think I don't make sense when I do rants, because I feel like I go all over the place. But, um, I hope you guys understood what I was trying, what I'm trying to say. But, um, yeah, it's just really frustrating, because, like, the writers keep, like, blocking fans, and, like, they're giving, they're giving general, generalization, they, oh, sorry, they keep generalizing the Supercorp fandom as, like, toxic, and I'm like, no, we just want answers, man. Like, we just want answers. And we say it politely, but they still block. And it's just, like, it's so, it's being so childish, like, hiding away and ignoring it, and, you know, your silence makes it worse. And, and, and it's just like, they know that they're doing it. They know. They just, they just, they're choosing to queerbait. I, I, I don't know how else to say it. So the writers have to be stopped being childish and can't either acknowledge it front and center. Because now that season six is going to air in 2021, like later on in the year, this gives them the opportunity to sit down and actually work a st out a storyline that can give every character equal screen time and finally make that decision on whether or not Supergirl is going to be canon or not. This is your chance, writers, to either fix your shit up, because season 5B was not a very good season. It was not very good, I'll, I'll admit. 5A, I was like, okay. But after Crisis, it like kind of lost the plot a bit. Like, you're, you're, you got lost a bit. And this is your chance, seeing you've got a bit of extra time to plan out your season. You can give all the characters extra storylines. I mean, we have Callie with her um, Guardian. Like, what happened to that? Give me some more badass Callie. Like, I am down for that. Give me Dance, and I want to see Dance. Give me that. Give me Nia and Brainy. Or even give me Nia and Kara, like, as in uh, the reporter storylines. Like, give me Kara and teaching Nia, you know, the basics of journalism, and like, you know, going on cases and, like, whatever. Like, enough, we don't need William. He's irrelevant. Like, get rid of him. Honestly, just keep the entire cast as the women 
and brainy. That's all I need, man. <laughs> That's all I need. So I'm just like, this is your chance to finally work your shit out and address everything that's gone wrong but knowing them they're not going to do it but i'm just saying i could surprise but like i'm not going to hold out hope but like it's i'm just saying anyways so if you guys made it to the end of this rant video thank you so much for watching i hope as i said as i made i hope i made sense to you guys um i know i'm going to get a bit of controversy on this video but like you know who what whatever it is what it is um but, but um yeah thank you for watching my rant i uh, hope you guys enjoyed it i love you guys and i will see you guys for another video in the week Oh, I need some water. I'm parched. <laughs> Alright, guys. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Ciao for now. Bye.